I was hearing some things that I hear over and over again, and they frustrate me because I think that they set all of us up on the wrong path, um, with the wrong belief system in place and with the wrong foundation in place to launch a book. And I just don't think that that sets us up for success. Whatever, however we define success, I don't think it sets us up. So I kind of wanted to set the record straight, in my opinion. <laughs> So there were a couple of areas where this particular individual was saying uh, uh, that you can cut a lot of corners. I'm very big into cutting corners where you can. I don't believe in spending more money on something than you need to. I don't believe that fancy titles and a lot of letters after your name necessarily, I mean, if, it, if, you, if your philosophy doesn't work for me, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't matter how many letters you have after your name, et cetera. I believe that there is, um, you know, when people say things like, I charge $8,000 an hour for consulting, I think, who pays that? I don't understand. So this particular individual was commenting that in, in certain areas about which I'm very passionate, and you know this, these are the areas of editing, writing, and cover design, that you can really cut a lot of corners. And I thought, well, that's really surprising to me because those are the very foundation of a book. Now, I appreciate that just like with YouTube starting up, right? When YouTube started, all these people started posting themselves singing and acting and doing all kinds of everything uh, because it was like quick, quick road to stardom. That was the perception. It worked for a couple people, Justin Bieber and et cetera, but it didn't necessarily work across the board. It just created this very saturated environment of people who were trying to take a shortcut to wherever it was that they, it's not even where they wanted to go, it's the, the feeling they wanted to have. They're trying to create a shortcut to that, to that level of success. And so as is the case there, is the case in the self-publishing world where um, you can, absolutely, I, I can write a book with quotes around it in 37 minutes, throw it up on Amazon, although not really, because Amazon's actually become a lot more uh, a lot harder on their books than they were when this all started and be like, yeah, I'm a published author. Let's go. The thing is, I don't teach how to write or create a book in five minutes because I don't believe it's possible. Um, if you're really doing it the right way and you're doing it in such a way that makes you comparable in quality to a traditionally published, well-published, heavily bought book, am I back? Am I back? Um, then you, ha you have to do it the right way, period, end of story. So he was talking about book covers and he was saying, you know, just go to Fiverr and get somebody to design your cover for $10. Here's my response to that. If someone is designing a book cover for $10, one of two things is going on. Either A, they really don't know what they're doing, in which case you don't want to work with them, or B, they have absolutely no idea what their worth is. Because do you, now this comes to my point of, do you have to pay someone $1,000 to design your book cover? No. If you want a custom illustration or something of that nature, then yes, you're, you're going to have to pay for that. That's all you're paying for the art. But if you want a professionally designed, properly designed, sharp looking cover, do you have to pay $1,000 for it? No. Do you have to pay more than $10 for it? A hundred percent. Because I'm concerned about the designer who's only charging $10 or $20 for a book cover and is really good. That concerns me because that says that that person is out of touch with his or her own worth in this space. And more often than not, I have clients who don't, um, they want to do it their own way, which I totally understand. So I give them kind of my uh, two cents on sites like Fiverr, which is good for a lot of things, I might add. Um, and they say, well, I think I'm going to be the exception. And they go out and they get a book cover designed. And then a month later, they need something from the designer and the designer is nowhere to be found. Or, you know, it, it, the list goes on and on. I've, I've not had a client yet have ex like long-term success and happiness and um, feeling like they were served really well from a site like Fiverr. So, yeah. And Joanne, you're a perfect example of this. I was thinking about you this morning. Your cover designer only charged $60 until you offered her $200. Immediately put her prices up. So here's the thing. I will not, this is just my philosophy in life. 
I will not work for less than I believe that I'm worth, and I won't pay anybody more than they believe they're worth. So what you did, Joanne, was an incredibly kind thing. And I've done, I mean, we, we, we've all been there, done that. And, and it was the quote unquote right thing. Like it's, you're very good. How, how do I phrase this? Like that says a lot about your character in a very, very good way that you were kind of like, no, I'm going to pay you more than this. Um, I don't think it's our job necessarily to convince people that they're worth more because until they believe that they're worth more. So it's like, I told Raglan the other day, I wanted him to put his book up to $6.99 or $7.99. He did it pretty quickly. He would have fought me on that if he didn't believe that he was worth that, that his book was worth that. Now, he and I could have gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and he may have ultimately decided to do it to prove me wrong or just for fun and giggles, but it wouldn't have stayed there because when that happens, okay, Raglan, smart point. When that happens, then um, if you don't believe in your own worth, you cannot expect someone else to pay for it. So Raglan had an interesting point that he... Um, Sales are lower, but still reasonable. It's been two or three days. So I'm going to, I'm going to have you be patient, which is something I don't do well, but let's be patient and, and, and carry on because I'm working with someone else now who's wondering why her sales are so low and her book is priced at $2.99, but it's positioned as one that can change your life. And my, my thing right off the bat is if your book can change my life, it should be, why are you only charging me $2.99 for it? That's crazy. So to people tip their designers, people do all kinds of things. Um, I've heard of that m multiple times. I've actually tipped. Um, I don't know. I, I called it a bonus. Call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's semantics, but I call it a bonus. And it's like, if someone goes above and beyond the call of duty, then I think that they should benefit from that. But now we're into a whole other different conversation. So I've talked about the crappy cover for $10. Now, the next thing that was being talked about was like um, uh, editing that you can hire an editor on Fiverr. Now, I may be slightly biased to this because I'm an editor, but I am here to tell you that anyone who offers to edit your book for under $100, take your $100 and go do something delightful with it because something else, delightful with it, because the value that you're going to get from that is nowhere near that. Again, you've got to find people who are fairly pricing their services, okay? You find, it's like any other business. And here's the greatest fear I have about these sorts of webinars that are circulating right now that are like, you know, hire somebody on Fiverr for five bucks to design your cover. Hire somebody on Fiverr for 10 bucks to edit. Hire, you know, write it this way in 30 minutes or less. Here's the greatest concern. They're setting the mindset of their client up to think that they can launch a profitable business, because that's what a book is, with no intentional investment. I think about places like bakeries. So I think about um, cupcakes, of course. And we have this place in Scottsdale and they have one out in, of course, Beverly Hills. And they're starting to open everywhere. I think they have one in Austin now called Sprinkles. They're amazing. These cupcakes are like $4 a cupcake. I, I thought, my God, who's going to spend $4 a cupcake? Me. I am now because they're that good. Now, if you had tried to convince the CEO of Sprinkles, whose name is escaping me right now, you could just go buy like crappy flour and crappy sugar and like some fake vanilla, and you could be making these things for a tenth of the price that you are making them for, she wouldn't have the business that she has. If you want to spend no money on a crappy cupcake or like donut or something that's full of GMO ingredients and garbage, like that's what Entenmann's is for. <laughs> like I love myself a good Entenmann's donut every once in a while, but that's not what I'm buying when I go to Sprinkles. And when people who I'm going to bet are your ideal readers are going to buy your book, they want to buy a good book. 
They want to buy a book that you've put in top putting. Hopefully you've got better grammar that you put time, energy, and effort into, and you brought in the best outside resources that you can afford to help you with the whole process. It does not have to cost an arm and a leg to do this, but you have to invest. It's like if you think of any other business, you just don't throw a product out there with no commitment to quality and have people rave about it. It doesn't work like that. And what I'm saying is whether, regardless from this point forward of how you invest in yourself in this book writing process, whether it's with me, whether it's with another coach, whether it's with another program or a workshop or whatever, please know that you have to invest in yourself. You just have to, you have to invest in your product. I think about like, we have these great steak restaurants. I'm not a big steak eater, but we have like these great steak restaurants in Scottsdale. We have a place called City Hall and I mean, people go up there and they pay like, it's stupid. It's like a hundred dollars for steak. I don't know. It's just crazy. I just don't appreciate steak enough to make, I'd rather go buy a hundred dollars worth of cupcakes from sprinkles. But anyway, those like, I'm sure that someone at some point said to those chefs, you know, you can get that steak, like just go down to this part of the city and you can get it for like nothing and just put a lot of seasoning on it and but that, then you're at Sizzler, you know, you're not at City Hall. So it's like, are you Sizzler or are you City Hall? And we all have to decide that as business owners. What, what's the caliber, not in terms of whether someone's, it's not about whether someone has or doesn't have, it's about what, who our customer is. Do, do they want to pay for something that's of quality? Or are they just looking to get everything they possibly can at the dollar store? And you are talking to a dollar store devotee. There are certain things that I just get at the dollar store because I don't need to pay. That's a whole other conversation. And my first cover was like $850, $900. And that was 15 years ago because it was a custom illustration. Um, and I started selling stuff. Like that's when I think my eBay lifestyle took on a life of its own because You'd be amazed how quickly 20 and 30 and $40 can add up. And when you want something, you just find a way to make it happen, period. End of story. I mean, that's just, you either want it or it's like Tommy Baker, my new favorite person said this morning, you either are committed to it or you're committed to something else. What I feel sad about is that people get really excited about this whole, oh my God, I can publish my book for less than $50 because what happens is then the book comes out and they are not mentally primed to do the work or spend the money. And I don't mean a lot of money. Let me tell you, Mark Dawson, if you know about Mark Dawson, he's a friend of mine. He's out of the UK. He's an author. He has completely launched as an indie thriller writer. He has a couple courses out. And I've watched his price for his course slowly go up over the last, I don't know, year and a half. So when he first launched, it was like $249. He's about to launch again, I think tomorrow, I think, Wednesday. And I think the price of his course is like $749. Now I'm here to tell you, I've taken his course. Um, it's worth that and then some. But there's a woman who he interviews as one of his testimonials. She's an author of fiction. And she said, I just spent $5 a day on ads. Just like Mark said, if you don't have $100 a day or even $10 a day, and I don't spend more than $10 a day, I Liz on an ad until I know it's going to work. If I'm not going to make at least $10 and one cent or get that returned to me, I'll do it. But you experiment for a while on the $5 a day. So whatever it is, what concerns me is these, is these individuals go through this and they get it in their mindset that it's easy. Oh my God, I can write a book in 30 minutes. Oh my God, I can publish it for less than $50. And then they, then they get confused and concerned because it, they don't, it's not selling and they don't know how to run Facebook ads, but they don't want to pay somebody more than $5 to teach them how to do it. Even though that somebody has spent three years learning all the tips, tricks, and shortcuts of how to make it work the most efficiently. In the, there's no immediate anything. There's no like, hey, snap your fingers and all of a sudden you're gonna sell. But there are processes that people have taken a lot of time 
to figure out for themselves and now teach other people. And so anyway, that's my soapbox for the day because I, I, I am so frustrated by that. And then what even frustrated me more is that at the end, there was a course being sold for like $249 on how to write the book in, you know, 30 minutes and spend $10 on the cover and on the editing. But I, but the person wanted people to pay him $249 to teach them how to do all that. And he had like 27,000 likes on the, on the, on the thing. Now, I don't know if those were real likes or what was going on, but anyway, it's just, it's just the nature of it. I, it doesn't, this idea of a starving artist is all very like romantic, but there is no reason that artists have to be starving. Zero, zero. So that's my thoughts on that.